want smooth, straight hair, but you just can't figure out how to do it. We're getting the do's and the don'ts with flat iron straightening. We're doing it all this morning with Brandy, the owner of Brandy Wiley Inc. Good morning. How are you? Thanks for coming in. Great. Thanks, Kirsten. We're excited so to have excited. you. And we're excited to talk about flattening our hair, straightening our hair, because so many people have questions out there. Where do we begin? Well, what's great about a flat iron is virtually every haircut can be styled with one. You just have to learn to be comfortable and confident with a different tool. Um, since the late 1800s, women have been straightening their hair with heat tools and smoothing irons and things like that, and they just keep getting better and better as time goes on. But the biggest question is always, which one should I buy? It's um, so many out there in the stores and so many different price ranges. So how do we tackle this? Where do we need to begin? Well, as a stylist in the salon, I'm looking for something that is going to be heavy duty. Um, I'm looking at the amount of time that it's going to be on in the salon. I need a styling tool that's going to be on for eight hours a day, you know, five, six days a week. Um, I'm looking for something that has a heavy duty cord. I want a really long cord. I want something that feels a little bit more ergonomical in my hand. Um, but does someone really need to spend $200 on a straightening iron to get that same look at home. Right, especially if we're just going to be using it maybe three or four times a week. Exactly. So when we go to the store and we're looking at the different irons, it's very difficult to figure out what the difference is between a $50 iron and a $200 iron. Right. Because they technically look the same. Um, the main difference between a less expensive iron is going to be that they're a steel plate. Okay. And they're going to have a very nice looking paint finish over the steel. Okay. Eventually that paint finish is going to wear away and as it wears away and the steel starts to corrode it's going to cause damage to the hair. So by investing a little bit more in a ceramic heater you're going to get even heat distribution and you're not going to cause as much damage long term. Great. So we're not going to fry our hair if we do ceramic. Right. There are certain things that you kind of get what you pay for to a certain extent yep. um, and a little bit more investment could get long-term uh, better quality results. And that's what we're all looking for. Great. Well, you're going to kind of show just a little bit with my hair. So I'm just going to sit down. Um, and I've already kind of done my hair today, even though it doesn't really look like that. Um, but I'm going to sit down and tell us if, you know, we want to start straightening our hair. What do we need to do? Where do we need to start? How about if the first step is make sure that our iron is on okay. and preheated. And then the next step would be to make sure that our hair is 110% dry. It has to be dry. Okay. Yes. My if hair is we dry. we have any moisture in there at all, we're we're going to cause more frizz or more damage than the effect that we actually want. Once we, um, once we have you completely dried, I always say divide and conquer. Okay. So if we use a few styling clips and we section off to get the hair that we're not working with out of our way, okay, yep. it will make it so much easier when we go in there and we start to smooth out ourselves. I always say to take about the section, about the width of the iron. Um, and you want to make sure that it's not too thick. You have about a medium textured hair. So we're going to use uh, 300 degrees on the smoothing iron. Okay. We're going to make sure that you're completely tangled three, tangle free the whole way through with a comb. We're going to start at the top and we're just going to slowly pull out. We're making sure that we're not clamping the iron too tight because too tight is not going to allow us to move the iron through the hair freely. And we don't want any ridges or anything. Right. Crimps so, or kinks or anything. So you just want to glide it through and all you're trying to do is just use a little bit of the heat to smooth over the cuticle of that hair and um, just slowly work section by section. A lot of people are always asking too, my hair seems so flat after I use it. What should, we do? What, what should we do to put some volume back in? When I'm doing my own hair, I like to kind of tilt my head to the side a little bit more when I'm looking in the mirror. Uh -huh. And when you're grabbing that section, pull straight out on a 90 degree angle from the scalp so that you are lifting a oh, little bit. Okay, so and not getting pulling it to lay straight forward. down. This gives it more of a lift. Right. What about products? What type of products should we use or should we put any serum on our hair after we're done straightening it? Well, you definitely want to make sure that you're using a heat protectant product before you blow dry. Okay. Because that is going to give you the best results. Then when you are blow drying or when you're straightening iron, if you apply a heat protectant spray, that's going to protect your hair a little bit 
and from the heat of the iron and it's also going to allow you to do other options with the iron. You might be able to flip it or wave it, curl it. Once you become more comfortable and confident with the iron. There's a ton of things you can do, a ton of different things. Well, Brittany, this is awesome. I'm going to have you flatten the rest of my hair as we hang out here. We have more information. I know, you should come every morning, Brandy. This is what I want. We'll have more information on our website, fox43.com. There's more to come on Fox 43.